Do, 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 do. Hurry up. We're on air in a minute. Right. Give us the letters. The letters. Right. There help, are. help in this one on the board while you get the rest out. That's it. There is only one. Eh? That's it. Well, what's in the bag? What's me walking? Oh. Yeah. How about I read this one then, Anna? Okay. See what this one says. Mm. Dear Paul, I think you are fantastic. Signed, Paul. Oh, I forgot about that one. Must be a fan letter. <laughs> Listen, what are we going to do about the show? We asked the viewers to write in with all the comments. Can our viewers write, then? Yeah, I expected hundreds of letters. Oh. Asking for clips and things like that, you know. Tell you what we could do. What? I could write them all out, as all the viewers have written them, and you could read them out. Oh, no, that's cheating. And it's against all the fundamental principles of broadcasting. Shall I get the typewriter? No, use a pen, it's quicker. OK. <laughs> Again, and welcome to Chuckle Vision Open Ear, the show that invites you, the viewers, to air your views. And we start with this letter from a Mr. Tom Ketchup Saucy. of Manchester. And he writes, Dear Paul and Barry, can I see my favourite clip from the sound of. What's that? Muesli. Muesli? It's a cereal. Oh, yeah. In which the heroine is trapped in the cab of a runaway loco. What's that? Locomotive. Oh, like an engine. No, an engine wears a feather and goes. Oh, yeah, so he does, yeah. Locomotive. It hits an iceberg in the North Atlantic and goes down with all hands. And feet. Saved Bram Downing by a passing fancy. It... What's a passing fancy? Haven't you ever had a passing fancy? Oh, yeah, I suppose I have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the heroine grabs a bar of soap and with a song on her lips and a wasp on her nose, washes herself ashore. Eddie likes that one. Please, can I see this clip again? Well, Mr Tom Ketchup of Manchester, the answer, of course, is no. Instead, we're going to show you a clip from the High Street Beauty Parlour series, The Hairdressers. Where's the hairdressers clip? It's here. Oh, where did you get that? Walter the Wig. Walter the Wig? Yeah. Well, doesn't he want it? No, he's not cutting hair any longer. Why not? He's cutting it shorter. Oh. Well, let's have another look at the clip. It's very nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's very useful as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, we've had a lot of letters about our next clip from the Arts and Crafts programme going to pot. But we're going to show it you anyway. What's it about? Pottery. Oh, I love poetry. I wandered lonely as a... Pot. I thought it was cloud. No, two's company, three's a cloud. Who oh, is it? No prizes for guessing what this is. I won't bother then. Good. It's a potter's wheel. And this is a potter's spare wheel. Go away. I'm now going to show you how to throw a pot. Can I throw it? Not that kind of throw, no. Oh. I'll start the wheel. Right. There it goes. <laughs> right, get me the clay. The clay. The clay. The clay. That's it. What's this? It's there. That's great. How about that? That's great, isn't it? Finished. You're doing very well there. Yeah. All it needs now is a handle on it. Yeah. Could I do that? 
Yeah, if you like, you put a handle on it, but don't forget to bring it back to the studio. OK. I'll see you in a bit. OK, great. <laughs> Sit. Eddie! Eddie! Eddie, where are you? Never mind, Eddie. Hey. Oh, well, I'm sure you'd all like to see the finished item from that programme. Yeah. It is. It's very good, isn't it? It's very good. It is. Yeah. And I'm sure you'll agree it was a very interesting programme. Very interesting. Well, now, another letter from a viewer. <laughs> Dear Chucklevision, I am writing to congratulate you on the high standard of Chucklevision. Very good. good. But I would like to point out that, in my opinion, a presenter with a marvellous personality and dynamic magnetism such as your programme has got should make better use of the said presenter's potential. Yes. I think that's good, isn't Go it? <laughs> but in my opinion, Barry should definitely be given more to do, as it is... You didn't write this, did you? No, no, no. You're not lying, are you? No, I'm standing. Oh, right. As it is clear that you are not making full use of his obvious... Talent. You did write this. Hey. So you want more to do, do you? <clears throat> There's a brush over there. Go and sweep up. What are you going to do? I'm going to sit here and watch armchair theatre. I should have guessed. Vincent Kelly is a right head case. He works for British Rail. This is their sign. Two railway lines, one going in each direction. Now, Vinnie was always mad on train spotting. And it was no surprise to anybody that when he left school, he got a job for British Rail as a porter at Lime Street Station. Now, Vince had this idea that he should always be making people smile. For instance, every Friday afternoon when he got his wage packet, he'd go along to the flower store and buy himself great big bunches of chrysanthemums and carnations. And then he'd go along to where the next train was coming in to meet the passengers. And he'd give them a bunch of flowers and he'd say, who are, madam? Welcome to Lime Street oh, Station. I hope you enjoy your visit here. Oh, and that would be all right if these people arrived and coming from London or all parts of the country. But the people coming through here now are coming from Wigan, St Helens and Broad Green. And that's just down the road from here. But all that was nothing to when he first met Sharon. And that's how he came to lose his job. Now, Sharon's a nice girl. She's just about Vincent's age. And it was her job to give out the station announcements. You know, like, Ding dong, the train now arriving at platform nine is the 9.45 intercity train from Houston. And so on. Anyway, early one morning last week, our Vinny's sweeping up the area around here. We've got just dead posh here now it's been revealed. And Sharon is arriving for work, looking really miserable. And this is where Vincent starts to get into trouble, because he just can't resist the chance to make someone smile. So he goes up to Sharon and asks her what's the matter. And it seems that it's something to do with not being able to get her hair done for a party she's going to that night, because she can't get an appointment in a dinner hour. So Vinny says, Sharon, don't you worry, girl. I'll do your job for an hour while you go out and get your hair done. And she says, um, no, I shouldn't. In a way, that really means she's going to say yes. Honest, I know all about the trains. I can do it easy. Uh, well, maybe, if you're sure. Of course I'm sure. So what happened was really as much Sharon's fault as Vinnie's. So Vinnie comes up here and Sharon shows him all the list of train times and shows him how to switch on this microphone, which, when you speak into it, you can be heard all over Lime Street. So she says, that's fine, and goes off to get her hair done. So Vinny looks down below at all the people gathered in the station, and he can't help thinking to himself how miserable they look and how much they need cheering up. So when he gets the signal that the next train is due to arrive, he switches on the microphone and he says, the train now we're having at platform seven, eight and nine is coming in sideways. And he looks down at the platform. And most people are not taking any notice. But he can see one or two have started smiling. So he decides to try again. The train now standing at platform five is for somewhere over the rainbow. Calling at Grange Hill, Albert Square, Emmerdale Farm, Maplin's Holiday Camp and Blue Peter Junction. And this time, a lot of people start smiling and giggling and looking up at the loudspeakers. But Vinny thinks it's about time he comes clean. So he makes another announcement. In fact, it's the 11.35, all stations to Runcorn and Crewe. 
but that's dead boring. So why not pretend you're going somewhere more interesting? One way or other, Vinny's feeling pretty pleased with himself, thinking he's making all those people smile. So he tries again. British Rail wished to make a special announcement. With all those passengers waiting to board the London train at Platform 8, please note that their train will now depart from Platform 1. So there's all these people marching across to Platform 1. So then Vinnie makes another announcement. Would passengers waiting for the through service to Manchester, Huddersfield, Leeds and Hull, please note their train will depart from Platform 9 and not from Platform 4. So even more people start hurrying about. But it's Vinnie's next announcement that really causes chaos. British Rail apologises, but the London train will, after all, depart from Platform 8, and the Manchester Uttersfield Leeds and all train will depart from Platform 4. And all the folk on the station start rushing back to the platform where they came from. And then Vinnie makes another announcement. British Rail regrets to announce... April Fool, everybody! And it's the middle of December. Well, after that, the man who's boss of British Rail all over Merseyside comes in and says to Vinnie, what do you think you're doing? You're fired. But that's not the end of the story. Later on that evening, the boss was driving home and he turned on the radio. BBC Radio Merseyside. And they're going on about British Rail's great new idea in cheering people up and giving them a laugh as they wait for their train. And whoever thought up the idea is certainly a great hero. But no one seems to know who it was. Well, it sorted itself out. Vinnie got his job back as a porter, and he's happy working here where he can see the trains properly. And Sharon's still announcing them. And she's got one special announcement to make. Vincent's down here by the flower stall, waiting to make someone smile when he hears this announcement echo all over the station. Would the British Rail porter at the flower store near Platform 4 please meet me after work? We've had a lot of letters asking to look behind the scenes here at Chucklevision. Well, here it is. Hey, we can't go any further. Uh, unfortunately, we can't go any further. Why not? It's very dark. Oh. Well, in that case, let's go back to the Royal Shakespeare Company and Hamlet. Shall I go and cook you one? What? An omelette. Not omelette, Hamlet. Oh. To be or not to be? That is the question. And remember, we need your answers by the end of the week on a postcard to the usual address. Timothy, this is not good enough. Hey. And now from Shakespeare to another kind of game show. Chess. You carry on with the cleaning. OK. Yes, the Wallasey and World Championship chess final. <laughs> this marathon final, played over 500 years, went through a very exciting phase when one false move could have completely altered the championship position. We show you now that exciting moment when the challenger was about to move for the first time in ten years. Will you turn that thing off or can I hear myself speaking here? Uh, and this is an extraordinarily crucial moment in the match. And, and yes, yes, I, I think he's going to move his knight. I've never seen anything like this in Championship Chess in many a year. Oh, oh, no, he's not. Well, what a dramatic match this is. What's this? Can't stand that noise. Now, what's next? Oh, yes, it's time for a book review. Yeah, I've got them here all on the trolley. Great. Yeah. And I've written a script for it. Oh, that's marvellous. There you are. That's the stuff. <sighs> now, the first book we are reviewing today is A. A. Milne by Winnie the Pooh. That's it. That's not right. Hey, eh? You've got it the wrong way round, haven't you? Oh, sorry. It's Milne the Pooh by A. A. Winnie. That's better. It's all about a little bear. I had a little bear. What? Teddy bear. I used to take it to bed with me every night until I lost it. When was this? Last week. Poor Eddie. Eddie? Eddie the teddy. Let me get this straight. Until last week, you slept with a teddy bear? Yeah. No, no, don't be silly. No, I didn't think so. No, sometimes I couldn't sleep at all on account of his snoring. Oh. Terrible snore he was. 
terrible. Enough of that, enough of it. Oh. Now, um, I'm sure you'll find it a most enlightening read. Yes, yes. excellent. Now, the second book... Oh, yeah? Yes, is Wars My Peas by Tolstoy. Yeah. Huh? It's about life as a waiter in a Scottish restaurant. Yeah. Wars My Peas. Ah, oh, see, yes. Uh, and the last book explains Einstein's theory of relativity. Oh, I know all about that. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, go on then, clever clogs. Explain it to the viewers. Me? Yes. Oh, OK. Einstein's theory of relativity says if you got in a spaceship and went away from Earth fast enough, you'd meet all your relatives coming back the other way at twice the speed of sound and you'd be younger than your granddad. There. Oh. Surprised? Oh, I am. I didn't know you knew that. Oh, uh, well, well, have you read, um, for Zachary's explanation of the expansion of gases in a controlled environment? No, I thought I'd wait until they made the film. Oh, I see. Which leads us very nicely to our television expert, Simon Lovell. You, get on with the cleaning. Oh, all right then. Well, actually, one thing Paul and Barry don't know yet is I've just lost my job as a film and TV... As a film and TV critic. The reason was I didn't have the proper film and TV critic's bow tie on. I went out... I went out this morning and I actually bought some, but it was, it was too late to save my job. So I thought, well, better thing to do than a, a wee trick with the critic's bow ties. This one is actually my favourite one because it's such a bright and breezy little number. And the trick goes as follows. We close up the old bow ties and use an old-fashioned collar. These just fit around the neck, just like so, and a, a wee stud used to go in there. The collar goes into a, what else but a collar box, and the lid is placed on top. The idea of the magical effect is to make the chosen bow tie, that little pink and purple one, vanish from here and appear on the collar. Two snaps of the fingers, and hopefully the magic's worked. If we have a look in the box, indeed, the chosen one's gone. Whoopee! The other half of the effect, of course, is to get the tie onto the collar, and there we are. The chosen breezy, bright bow tie has leapt across by magic. Still didn't save the critic's job, though, so I thought I'd do another trick instead. This trick involves a wee lid. I've labelled it for you. And the inside is lined with cloth because I felt like it. The other thing we need is a little black poker chip. The black poker chip goes into the lid. The lid goes onto the table and with a wee wave over the top, the chip changes into a red one. I can see you're not too impressed by that. We'll try it one more time. This time the red chip goes into the pocket. Snap and the chip will leap from the pocket under the lid. It's not actually under the lid. However, if we look under the mat, we'll find the chip has leapt all the way through and changed into a giant coin all at the same time. I know what you're saying to yourself. If this boy is such a great magician, why couldn't he just have got the coin under the lid? Well, the problem was I didn't just have to get it through that lid. I had to get it through that lid and 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 that lid that lid and that lid and that lid. Whew! And now... It's back to open ear. Another letter is from a wig manufacturer. It came hair mail. Yes. It says, Dear Paul and Barry, Please show us again a marvellous piece on swallows first shown last week. Well, for those who have missed it, here it is again. Mm. There you are. Two swallows. <laughs> I'm sure most enlightening. Yeah. And now for our film spot. Film pot? Film, film spot. Oh. Film spot. <laughs> <laughs> time for our film spot. <laughs> Now it's time for our film spot. Great, I love films, especially if they've got a happy ending. Yeah, I do as well. Yeah, it's great. Well, the first clip we are going to see is taken from a Tarzan film shortly to be seen on BBC Two. It's different because unlike most Tarzan films, it isn't shot in Africa, but Alaska. So here it is, a marvellous piece of movie history. Will you stop doing that? Ah! Oh, oh, it's freezing out here. And I'm lost! What's... what's all this? What's... And what's this? Hey, great, you found Eddie! Oh. Say hello, Eddie. That's all it is. <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for this week, uh, but let's leave you with just one last look at those magical chess players. Goodbye. Say goodbye, Eddie. Goodbye, Eddie.